Hello and welcome back to Primary Progression. If you're new here, hello. Today we're going to be looking at 10 top tips for staff members at school for the classroom. Let's go. Top tip number one, sit anywhere. Now I found this really useful to start off with every single year in the classroom. At first, your children might be a little bit quiet when they come to the classroom, trying to get used to each other, the new room, the new teacher, any other staff members, but their personalities will show very, very quickly. And you will learn who is really good friends, who should be sat next to each other, and who probably shouldn't because they're a little bit too chatty and unfocused, just by letting them sit anywhere they want in the first week. Sometimes you can spot it in the first day, and this will really help you to map out your seating plans for the different lessons. Look at who might need some extra support and modelling on how to socialise. Look at who is a really good role model in the classroom. And who is someone to keep an eye on because they're just a little bit shy and need some help with their conversation. Let them sit anywhere and you will learn so much about them. Top tip number two. Be known to the parents. It may sound obvious, Oh, they'll know I'm their class teacher. But could they point you out against all the other teachers? Be present on the playground where possible when children are arriving. Obviously, when they're being dismissed at the end of the day, just give the parent a quick wave and hello so they know that you're there. If you get to know the parents, the parents feel more comfortable and more open to talking to you. So if an issue arises, they will come straight to you rather than possibly complaining to anyone else. Knowing the parents really is helpful. It just takes a tiny moment out of your day. Top tip number three, great communication. Now, this is mainly to do with linking to top tip number two of being known by the parents. The communication I want to focus on is with parents. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, I let them know if there's a problem. That's my problem. I have found in schools that parents are communicated with only when there's an issue. Oh, your child fell over today, or oh, your child isn't well. Oh, we've had some behavioural and focus issues, we'd like to have a chat. Parents don't always want to hear the negatives. Obviously they need to, but have good communication with them. Talk to them about the positives. Now this could be a phone call, or if you have a messaging service with your parents through things such as Class Dojo or Seesaw, then message them and say, they've had a great day. If you do little mini certificates they can take home at the end of the day, do that. Star of the week, do that. Whatever it is that you want to do, what works for you, what follows your school policies, make sure you have great communication with the parents, both good and bad. Parents, especially if they are used to hearing negative comments, will love it if you can call them and say, I am so proud of this child today. They had great communication. They worked really hard on their emotional well-being. They did great socialization, cooperation and teamwork. You should be really proud of them. Oh, this child today did such amazing writing. They usually really dislike writing. They wrote four pages. We're so proud, so should you be. Let the parents know the good as well as the bad. They will appreciate it. Top tip number four, get to know your activities. Now this may sound very simple, and it is. We do them all the time at the beginning of the year, usually on transition day to get to know the class and the teacher. But sometimes it's useful doing them in that first couple of weeks back too. It can be an actual lesson activity or they can be filler activities. Some of them can be really useful to help children break out of that comfort zone and be more sociable if they're a little bit shy. It lets the teacher, you, get to know your class a little better. You might be surprised by what you find. Have a look on the Primary Progression website, linked in the description below, at our resources page where we do have some activities that you can do with your class. One of my favourites is the true or false quiz where you, the teacher, get to put up information about yourself. So for example, I did it with my class every year and I always put up, have I been skydiving? They answer true or false. And the answer was, I've never been actually skydiving, I've been indoor skydiving. That one was a little bit trickier. You can put up things like, I have got a brother. That would be false, I don't. 
So the kids get to learn more about you and you get to see how intuitive they are. Other activities are things such as an all about me page, that's standard. But one activity I really like, which is in our pack on our website, is a guess who activity. And the kids get to fill out everything on there and then they don't put their name. The children in the class have to try and figure out who is it? Who are we talking about? It becomes a really fun little game. So get to know you activities. As much as some children might not like them at first, they will enjoy them. Top tip number five, one day at a time. Now I say this to everybody because I really mean it. Teaching is hard. Teaching is tiring. Teaching is exhausting mentally, physically, emotionally. You go through all of it. I fully understand that because I've been there. So taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. It can be tricky, but once you've got it in your head, it will be really useful. Okay, this meeting didn't go to plan. Okay, this lesson didn't go to plan. Deep breath. What can I do moving forwards? I can't change the past, but I can plan for my future. With one day at a time, if you need extra support, speak to your colleagues, speak to your head teacher. If you are an ECT, speak to your mentor or your tutor. There are so many resources, including people, all around you when you are a teacher. If you are struggling and you are taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, it's okay to ask for help. Top tip number six, clean slate. Now, this is talking about those children that unfortunately have a bad reputation in the school. One of the classes I inherited one year, I was told a few children in the class didn't respond well to pretty much anything. That they were mischievous, they could be really rude, that they like to lie. And I'm a firm believer that, okay, if they've had a wobbly year, fine, but we start on a clean slate. I'm not gonna go in there, and you shouldn't either, thinking, oh my goodness, these children have been horrible to the previous teacher, they're gonna make the year a nightmare. If you start that way, that's what's gonna happen. Children misbehave for a reason. Find out the reason, teach them that open communication is okay. Be the person they want to talk to, that they feel safe talking to. Once you've got that rapport with your children and they know you are not judging them for previous years, they will open up, they will focus, they will learn. You just have to put in the work and give them a clean slate. Top tip number seven, smile boards. Now, what is a smile board you're probably thinking? Let me explain. This is something I have used every year in my classroom. It gives me an opportunity and any other staff in the room to learn the faces and match them to the names of the children in my class. It allows the children to learn each other's names, recognise faces, especially if they're new, or they mix up the classrooms, which some schools do every year. Now, a smile board starts off with their first day of whatever year group they're in, picture. They put their picture up with their name on the board, as long as they have photo permission, of course. And then that's how it starts. Every single child that has photo permission puts their image up on the board. If they don't have photo permission, perhaps consider calling the parent to let them know it's only in class, nothing online or social media or anything. And if they still say no, ask the child if they want to put up something that represents them. They could draw a picture or they could pick a picture of something they feel represents their personality and what they stand for. Anyway, the smile board is a really fantastic tool that you can develop throughout the entire year. It will let visitors understand who is who. If a child is coming to the classroom and they're told they need to find someone that they recognise the face of but don't know the name, and you don't want them to disrupt your lesson, direct them to the smile board, they can find them. All throughout the year as well, you can update this board, which I think is fantastic. Every time we did a big event, or we had a funny moment in class, and it all got captured, that is when we would update the board. We would put up the pictures of what they had just done. So for example, if we had gone on a school trip and got lots of really good pictures, and they were profile photos, we might ask them, would you like to update your photo? Now this was purely the child's decision. If they wanted to keep the original photo, that is fine. If they wanted to update it, that is also fine. 
If any children really did not want their photo on display whatsoever from the beginning of the year, please remember that is also okay. Let them decide if they want to draw an image of themselves, leave a square with their name, or give them some choices. Take some silly pictures, take some outgoing photos, take some just standing naturally, and they can have a selection to choose between. I really think smile boards are fantastic, and I hope you can implement them into your classrooms. It's such an easy way for children to get to know each other, you to get to know each other, them to be reminded of fantastic events, and just be a bit fun and silly sometimes too. Top tip number eight, staff rapport. This probably seems obvious. You've got to have a good relationship with staff in your school. You can't change who you work with. Even if it might be someone that you dislike, you have to be civil and work with them. That's all fine, but what I'm talking about is making sure that you don't get lost in your own world of your classroom. It happened to me in the past and it took a very good colleague of mine to just nudge me into the staff room because I was a little bit nervous, being new and getting to know everyone. So at break times, if it's not imperative for you to stay in the classroom, go to the staff room and socialise, have your break. Your classroom will still be there when you get back. But having those conversations and socialising Talking to actual adults in the day is really important for your mental well-being. And being able to get to know the staff will help you make your days go easier. And I'm not just talking about the other teachers or the support staff such as TAs or one-to-one -one adults. I'm talking about everyone. If you have got someone who is the caretaker or a handyman or woman, someone that takes care of a specific area, the receptionist, the admin officer, your cleaners. Get to know all of them. You are all part of your school family. Get to know everyone. My favorite thing is that when we've got to know each other, when you do things like Christmas work do's or end of year do's, everyone gets along so well and you have so much more fun because you're not the one sat in the corner being like, I don't really know anybody. So whether it's your first year or your 21st year, make sure that every year you are having a good rapport with every staff member, or at least trying your best. Top tip number nine, support staff. Now, when I say support staff, the bit that I am gonna focus on is your teaching assistants, learning support assistants, one-to-one -one adults, that kind of range of staff member. They will keep you standing in the classroom. <laughs> they will keep you sane. I don't know what I would have done last year without my amazing TA and one-to-one -one adults. They kept me sane in my classroom for sure. <laughs> they are so supportive of you. They will do what you need to do. They will listen to you. They will follow your direction, but you just need to give them the direction. Lots of TAs and one-to-ones are fantastic. Mine were, and they knew what I wanted before I even said it. And they had such great initiative, they would just go and get things done. And when I thought of them, oh, I need this done today, Oh, I've already done it, was the response. Or, oh yeah, I'll do that in two minutes. They were amazing. Not all TAs have that intuition because they might be new at it. They might not have been doing it for a while. They might just not know your style of teaching yet if they're not used to you. Make sure you give direction and be friends if you can. We had great jokes around in my classroom and it just made the day a lot better. The children saw you having good positive rapport. It's great role modeling for them and you just enjoy being in your classroom a lot more. Make sure though that you thank them. One of the biggest things as well is, yes, it's their job to help you. Every support staff member I've ever known has gone above and beyond what they actually need to do. Make sure that they know you recognize that. Just a simple, thanks for doing this, I really appreciate it, is all they really need. Maybe a bit of chocolate every now and then, but just make sure you recognize how amazing your support staff really are. Top tip number 10 be reflective. Now this was probably drummed into your brain when you were training, no matter when you were training. Be reflective, be a reflective practitioner, review what you've done. We've heard it all before, but it is so important and true. If you can't look back on a lesson you've done or a week you've had or planning you did and spot what went well, what could go better, you're never gonna develop as a teacher. You're never gonna progress through your career. You need to be a, what's called a reflective practitioner. And if you can model that to your students, they will become what's known as reflective learners. If you can in front of them go, oh, okay, this lesson didn't go to plan. What do you think we need to work on next time to make it better? For example, in a maths lesson, if they didn't understand a concept, 
probably to do with fractions, they might say, let's take it back a step. Obviously you'd already know this, but let's take it back a step and look at a different area and then work your way back up. If you have this communication with the children and you do it yourself, one, it will make your life easier, and two, they will learn how to be reflective themselves and do it with their own work. Oh, okay, I didn't get that expanded noun phrase in my work today. I think I just need to look at some nouns and adjectives and understand what they are fully before I can combine them with any kind of determiner or prepositional phrase or anything. Be reflective and have fun. So that's my 10 top tips for teachers or school staff in general for having an easier life in the classroom. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hit that little bell so that you get notifications when we upload. And drop a comment if there's any other top tips you would like or any other information you think we should do a video on. And remember, practice makes progress. Have a great day.